Paul Thomas, Seneca Lake Wine Trail, here this morning with Don Kilcoin, co-owner, vineyard manager, winemaker, security, <laughs> right. a whole lot of things. You and your wife, Jessica, That's right, manage the boss. Catherine Valley Winery. That's correct. <laughs> and she's the boss. Yeah. I'm glad we clarified that up front. Well, you know, things that are obvious. <laughs> you might as well commit. That's right. That's right. So, um, so, Don, if you would, just kind of tell us a little bit, just give us an overview of the winery, when you guys opened it up. Those kind of kind of stuff. Uh, my wife and I bought this farm in 2001, and we built this kind of constructed the winery and opened the winery in 2003. We produced our first few vintages at a previous place that I worked, and then brought our wines here and got started. And once we were going, we were off and rolling. Everything worked fair, fairly Excellent. well. And you have vines. Fortunately, when we bought this farm, there were eight acres of grapes, and we've been planting vineyards ever since, and now orchards as well. Fantastic. So what would you, can you just list some of the different grapes and some of the other products you grow? Sure. So we have, uh, when we bought the farm, there were Niagara and Catawba here. And these are old varieties of Native American grapes. And they were, you know, fairly well established for many years before we bought the farm. And since then, we've planted Riesling and Chardonnay, and Cabernet Franc and Pinot Gris and thing, other things like that. And uh, we also planted several apple varieties. We, we kind of focused on heirloom apple varieties that are good for hard cider production. Which is where you lead segue perfectly into the next topic, <laughs> which is Boxer Cider. Yeah. So tell, tell the viewers a little bit about Boxer Cider. Boxer Cider is a unique package. Uh, we put it together probably five years ago for the first time, and we've been using antique apple varieties that were developed in the 17th century. They're made for hard cider production only. No kidding. Yeah. There you is can't such really a thing. I didn't even know there was yeah, such a they, thing. They don't taste very well when you just eat them as <laughs> no fresh kidding. fruit, but as cider, they're incredible. No kidding. I yeah. didn't even, I had no, I'm sure many of you viewers like me had no idea that Frankly, was Frankly, I didn't know either until I really started getting into this cider thing. It's I thought you more just of a tradition. whatever apples you happen to have laying around and <laughs> right. up some cider. Yeah. Shows how much I know. Yeah. <laughs> so you've got this fantastic view yes. that viewers inevitably can see. Tell us the story behind that when you purchased the property years oh my ago. My goodness, when my wife and I were looking for properties here years ago, probably back in 99, we really started shopping seriously. We came out and we were driving up and down the road and there was a for sale sign at this place. And when I came here, there was nothing but a huge hedgerow up and down here. You couldn't see the, the lake or anything and so uh, the lady said oh yeah we have some vineyards why don't you drive down the road and I drove down the road and this beautiful view opened up and dove flew out of the sky and it was just gorgeous <laughs> you know <laughs> birds chirping in the distance it was this it was the place very cool and then yeah. you had to tear the head draw out halfway. Yeah, of course <laughs> <laughs> a lot of fun there I'm sure so uh, your winery Catherine Valley Winery. Catherine, that's right. The pronunciation is important. Give us the background on that, where you guys came up with that name. Well, Catherine was the name of an Indian clan mother. She used to live with the Seneca Indian tribe down where Montour Falls is right now. It's only probably five miles south of here. And as a clan mother, she was in charge of hiring and firing chiefs, and she held deed to the, the land. I mean, she was a very important person. In fact, people refer to her as Queen Catherine because she carried herself with nobility and, and everybody respected her. And so everything down through here is named after her. We took a regional name. Very cool. Yeah. And it's good. Empowered women. Yeah, that's right. We're all about that. It was a matriarchal society. <laughs> you got to love that. Like Embrace the boss. that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and any, any particular uh, grapes or wines you're particularly happy with that you guys make here? You know, one of the things that has really surprised me, my wife and I, when we first bought this farm, we bought, uh, like I said, there were Catawba here, and Catawba is planted on the best soil on the whole farm. And so we were like, we're gonna plant, tear those out and plant Gewürztraminer and Pinot Noir, we can't wait. But uh, I didn't have time because we were constructing this place. So I went ahead and I made wine out of that Catawba. It turns out it was the number one selling wine, has been since we've been open every year, it, some years, I sell more of the Lost Irishman, which is our Catawba-based wine, than all of our other wines combined. That's unbelievable. It is. Because you don't think of Catawba. I mean, you know, it's a popular grape. It's it gets used in a lot of things. Yeah. But you wouldn't think of that. And that has, and that right there is a great reminder to everybody, me, the listeners, the viewers, everybody, about terroir. That's right. And how incredibly crucial that can be. It's I mean, huge. It's, you're living proof of that. That's right. Very yeah, cool. and it's not your typical Catawba. It's a little drier. It's really delicious, actually. So I guess you left those vines in. Of course. <laughs> <laughs>